Uh, hello, friends. This is Peter Herbeck. Um, probably like many of you, I've been spending time over the last uh, month or so just reading through the Acts of the Apostles. Talked about some of it in recent videos as well, this great season of the church year. And I am was just struck again and again by the zeal of the apostles. You know? um, the cost they were willing to pay the energy that they put out, um, the, the heroic love that drove them to stand for the truth in, um, at a time and in a way that they knew was going to cost them. And because of the grace and power of the Holy Spirit in their lives, clearly the grace of Pentecost that they received, they went through a transformation, Peter being, you know, the, the greatest example of that, right? He stood uh, deathly afraid on Holy Thursday night, not knowing what to do, troubled, fearful, and he ends up denying Jesus. And then uh, he not only witnesses the resurrected humanity of Jesus and seeing him, but then he also receives the grace and power of the Holy Spirit, which is the fire of God's love that's put into his heart. And zeal is, is such an important virtue in the Christian life, but it's, I think, mostly misunderstood today, not talked about very much, and kind of connected to zealotry, like it's somehow a bad thing. On one level, another way it often gets overlooked or rejected is I remember way back I was getting my master's degree in theology, and one of the things I was reflecting on was um, the teaching of John Paul II's um, vision for evangelization. And in the context of a of one of the documents he wrote, he talked about it, the importance of zeal for the salvation of souls. And I was talking about it, and so uh, when I was defending uh, my thesis, one of the professors said to me like. Zeal for souls, what could, you, what could you possibly be thinking of there? And I said, well, you know, zeal for the salvation of souls. And then this person said to me, well, don't you know that we don't think that way in the church anymore and pretty much everybody is on their own path and, uh, you know, it's kind of the universalism issue that's present. It was right there in my the defense of my thesis. I didn't know if they were going to pass me or not, you know. They thought I kind of missed the point of some of the formation. But here's John, St. John Paul II talking about it as like a fundamental characteristic of the life of a disciple. So with that in mind, um, I was also thinking about how in our culture and, you know, every day on videos and people are selling uh, ways of life, like what does it mean? How, how to live the great life, how to be your best self, how to make the most of the time, how to be successful and all that. And I mean, that's some good stuff there, you know, probably. But I think one of the things that's rarely ever we ever think of is that um, the saints are the history's most wisest people when it comes to understanding what true greatness is and how to maximize your life for the most valuable cause or how to make the most of your life from an eternal perspective. And I was, it got me thinking about um, how often the saints talk about zeal and they discover it's not like a burden, like, oh gosh, I have to go now. I have to pay a lot more attention to God, you know, like having zeal for God's holiness, zeal for holiness in our life, or I gotta, I've got to labor, you know, like obeying the commandments and thinking about that. And it's kind of a buzzkill um, or zeal for the salvation of others, you know, which uh, most people today would not find that very inspiring. But they found all that inspiring because they understood what zeal was. You know, I came across, you know, zeal, Greek word for it is delos, and it means uh, derivative of deo, quote, means to boil and to throb with heat. You know, so that your heart's beating, your there's there's you know the the energies within you are rising. But the Christian understanding of zeal is because of love, because of love for God, right? Zeal for God's holiness, the holiness of God, which was demonstrated with Jesus when he went into the temple and the money changers were degrading the place and they're buying and selling. And he was hot, you know, like a zeal for God's house consumed him, the Bible said. And Jesus overthrew the tables and got the cords and threw them out. Get out of here. That was zeal for the holiness of God. And it was part of Jesus, you know, it was in his heart. And so I thought I'd, I came across some great quotes from the saints. And they talk about how important zeal is, zeal for the salvation of souls. And so I thought it'd be good just to read some of it because it's, 
their clarity is so amazing. For example, a St. Vincent de Paul, here's what he said. While he lived, he's talking about Jesus. While Jesus lived on earth, he directed all his thoughts to the salvation of men and still has these same sentiments for that today, for that is where God's will lies. He came and he comes for this every day. And by his example, he has taught us all the virtues necessary to his quality as savior. And so let us hand ourselves over to him so he might continue that same quality in us and through us. Zeal for extending God's kingdom, zeal for procuring the neighbor's salvation. Is there anything in the world more perfect than this? If the love of God is a fire, zeal is its flame. If love is a sun, zeal is its ray. Zeal is what is purest in God's love. And he added, let us place our hand on our heart. Do we feel this desire within us? If we do, what happiness? If we do not feel it, let us be ashamed and recognize that we're not missionaries. For true missionaries are simple, humble, mortified, and full of zeal for the work. Now, you know, St. Vincent de Paul obviously was inspired by the Lord himself and his zeal. He, he went to the cross for our salvation. He labored in the apostles. And you think about all that they endured and Paul, you know, how many times he was imprisoned and beaten and shipwrecked and all the rest. And he just kept going. He's driven by love for God, zeal for God, and zeal for the salvation of souls. And they here, de Paul is saying, I want us to, he's teaching young missionaries. And he's saying, I want you to be attentive, each one of us to be attentive to what was most important to the Lord and how we behave. We want to be like him. We want to follow in his footsteps. We want our heart, our mind, our passion to be just like his. Here's an interesting one from uh, St. Therese, Therese of Jesus. She said, this is an inclination given me by our Lord. She had an inspiration that came to her in praying as she was reflecting on it. She said, I think... The Lord prizes one soul, which by his mercy and through our diligence and prayer, we may have gained for him more than all the other services we can render him. Now, there she is. She's a, she's a saint. She's radically in love with the Lord. And she's praying and wondering, you know, what does the Lord desire most? What's of the greatest value? How can I maximize my time and my energy to do the things that Jesus values the most. And of course, in the eternal perspective, there's, there's, no, there's no better calculus in learning how to define what is most valuable. And she's saying the Lord gave her this inspiration, this inclination that the most important she can think she can possibly do is to help and cooperate with the Lord in the salvation of lives, of people, of individuals, salvation of souls. Uh, here's another one a popular, pretty popular saint, St. Francis. St. Bonaventure, uh, his official biographer, described Francis this way. Francis was a sharp sword all on fire. Zeal for the salvation of others pierced the depths of Francis's heart in his burning love. If he saw a soul redeemed with the precious blood of Jesus Christ being stained with sin, he would over... He would be overcome with sorrow. He would weep so compassionately that he seemed to travail over them continually like a mother in Christ. Now think about that. One of the most popular saints in history, 800 years ago, people by the millions, the many, many millions, still track from people from every nation go to Assisi, just about every nation, you know, um, over the years to just go and pray and be somehow be near this guy who lives such a profoundly attractive life and full of love and courage and, and zeal. And Bonaventure gives us a look into the heart of what motivated him. And this is often missed about St. Francis today. St. Francis is kind of raised like the ultimate social justice warrior or like he's totally focused on the environment 
or we modernize him in a way. Certainly he cared about creation and all that. I'm not debating that, but we kind of focus on that as if that was the most important stuff to him. And it wasn't. The most important stuff was this. This is St. Saint Bonaventure is telling us this is what made this great man tick. It goes on. Bonaventure says with special emphasis, he makes this point. He said this zeal, this, this passion for what? For people who had been baptized, he said, had been touched by the blood of Jesus Christ, um, were falling into sin. It would make him weep. And he'd pray for them. That was love. That was zeal. That was the heart of God. He'd share the gospel with them. Bonaventure goes on. He goes, this was the reason he was so energetic in prayer and so active in preaching. Christ gave himself up to death for the salvation of others. And Francis desired to follow in his footsteps to the last. You know, So the, the greatest life is a life conformed to Christ. Even the smallest person, even the least educated person, person with very little resource, can be great in the kingdom of God by following in the footsteps of Jesus and having the Lord's priorities in determining what kind of person am I going to be? You know, that's a big battle for people today because the world just puts out idols constantly. You got to be rich. You got to be powerful. You got to have a big footprint. You got to be, you, you know, got to be honored and recognized and all that stuff by the things of the world. So people, we conform our lives, even churchgoers, we conform our lives to look like everybody else and to stay within the boundaries of how the, what the world defines as great and most valuable and the kind of life that we ought to live. Of course, it's easy to, to not be zealous because it's unpopular to be zealous. Or it, in the, like in the case of the apostles, they paid a very high price, as did St. Francis and, and some of his brothers as well. They paid a high price at times for being zealous and bringing people the faith. Again, just like the apostles. Bonaventure goes on, even talking a little bit more. He said, Francis realized that he was sent by God to win for Christ the soul's which the devil was trying to snatch away. He became a herald of the gospel, and he went about the towns and villages preaching the kingdom of God, not in such words as human wisdom teaches, but in words taught him by the Holy Spirit. And so it was the Holy Spirit that was moving him. He was burning with love, love for the Father, love for Christ, love for his neighbor, and that love of neighbor included, like Francis, caring for the poor, caring for the lepers, but it meant passionately daily being an instrument of God's grace and communicating the truth of salvation. He pursued people's eternal destiny. It mattered to him. It was at the heart of his life. The saints all shared this. Here's another, here's another interesting quote from uh, St. Vincent Ferrer. He said, salvation of souls is the principal desire of God. Give me souls and take the rest for yourself. Salvation of souls is the principal desire of God. It's one of the things we learn about God. And we know that for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believed in him would not die, but have everlasting life. Jesus went all the way. He went all the way down to death itself, dying on a cross. He, he received, you know, Every, you know, the total attack of the kingdom of darkness. He was mocked, ridiculed, stripped, taken out of his, his very city, the city of Jerusalem. He was crucified brutally. Uh, he died a humiliating death. And in doing that, he did it in love. He did it for love. He talk about zeal, zeal for the father. He said he came to do the work of the father. He loved the father to the end by obeying his commandments. So he's motivated radically by love for the Father, zeal for the Father, zeal for the Father's house and his will, right? Now he's the greatest you know, person who's ever walked the face of the earth. He defined greatness, he defined success, if you wanna use that term. And in the kingdom of God, it's obedience to God, it's radical love. And zeal is one way you express radical love. You obey the Lord. Is this what the Lord wants? I'm going to go do it. And I know now, the saints show me, the apostles showed me, and Jesus himself showed me where that greatness is. And then he poured out that fire of the Spirit that was in him. 
his passion, death, resurrection, ascension into glory at the city, seated at the right hand of the Father, Jesus pours out the fire of the Holy Spirit, which animates us and is the, is the source and the force within us that, that awakens these gifts, that equips us with these gifts. So if you feel like, wow, this is so far from where I'm at, I don't, I don't ever really think about this, or um, it kind of scares me to think about it, uh, or I'm like so many of us in the church, lukewarm, you know, not really concerned about my neighbor's destiny, maybe not even that concerned about my own destiny. Maybe I'm presumptuous about the future. I live the life I want to live. I'm a nice person. I'm, an, I'm a good person. All good people go to heaven. I don't really need to think about these eternal things so much. It's all going to work itself out in the meantime. I'm just going to follow my goals and my ideas in this world and kind of go along and to get along like a lot of people do. Maybe that's where you are. Well, that's not a Christian mind. That's not a Christian heart. And we're, we're kind of getting ripped off. The devil's deceiving us. The world is deceiving us and trying to say, look at all the glitters over here. Look at all the power and influence and recognition and impact that you can have in the world if you think this way, if you live this way, if you dedicate your energy and your money and your time to these kinds of things. And many times it has nothing to do with the preoccupation of the Lord and of those who are most like him, and those who are being rewarded in heaven for all eternity. A lot of people go for the goal here in this world, pursue it all, whatever that is for them, and the idols, and get everything here I possibly can in terms of recognition, reward, influence, power, and all that. They never think of eternity. Friends, the apostles believe the word of God that said, all flesh is grass, and it's glory. Yeah, there's moments of glory. It's glory is like the flower of the field. It's here today and it's gone tomorrow. All the glory that everybody's pursuing in this world that brings, you know, so much. We have all the trophies that we carry and project out. It's going to be over like that. And then what? It's gone. And then the real calculus, the calculus of the kingdom gets revealed on judgment day or when the Lord returns. And people are going to be pounding their chest saying, what was I thinking? What was I thinking? So in this great season, friends, of this church year, and we're, we're just listening and listening to the, the, the ministry of the apostles. And hopefully you're giving yourself time for that. And, and you're inspired by them. And you hear the call of the Lord to real live discipleship. And you can pray and ask God and he'll give you these gifts because he wants to. Say, Lord, awaken my heart. I want my heart to throb like, you know, dis, like Vincent de Paul and, and St. Francis of Assisi and uh, Therese of G, Teresa of Jesus and many, many more. I want to see what they see, Lord. I'm kind of blinded. I'm kind of mixed in lukewarmness and mediocrity. I want to have a great heart like they did. And I want to have the courage to live the way they did in the context of my vocation. I want to do what pleases you. Lord, give me the gift of of zeal. Holy Spirit, give me the gift of zeal. And he'll do it. If you hunger and thirst for it, he'll give it to you. That's wisdom. That's a great life. That's part of what a great life looks like, defined by heaven, defined by the Lord. Friends, if, if this video is a help to you, you're encouraged by it, hit the subscribe button or the thumbs up or whatever it is on there. Um, or you can go to our website as well at Renewal Ministries, and there's a lot of good stuff there for you that um, Ralph Martin's YouTube videos, our radio shows, our television shows. And, you know, if this has been a blessing to you, spread the word among your friends. Let's help each other live zealously and with clarity of purpose in a time when the world is just lost and needs the people of God to live like the Lord and to live like the saints. God bless you.